We're coming into contact with a wide variety of attitudes and opinions about PrEP, uh, ranging from you know, those who don't even know about PrEP, which is really surprising to me, to hostility around the fact that, no, we shouldn't be doing this. The manufacturer of the drug, um, Gilead Sciences, has decided not to advertise it. The doctor said, well, you shouldn't do that. You should use condoms because there still is a lot of homophobia in the medical system, including from, there may be some gay doctors who think that gay men should always use condoms. Hi, this is Nick Hazamia with Daily Extra. Welcome to the fourth part of our series on pre-exposure prophylactics, otherwise known as PrEPs. The promise is great, a pill you take every day that prevents HIV transmission. Early studies are encouraging, but uptake among gay men is surprisingly low. As a nurse here, mm -hmm. and I mean, on in, we're in the Castro, mm -hmm. you know, where gay men come in all the time and inquire and ask you, how many people ask you about PrEP? On average, between five and seven patients a week. Right now in this clinic, I'm seeing roughly 14 to 15,000 patients a year. They're coming here to get the information first mm. because this is what we do. We are a sexual health clinic. Oftentimes they have guys coming in who may want to talk to the doctor about PrEP, but they don't know how to talk to the doctor about PrEP um, because either they don't see the primary care doctor that often or they try to talk to the doctor about PrEP and the doctor didn't know about it or the doctor said, well, you shouldn't do that. You should use condoms because there still is a lot of homophobia in the medical system, including from, there may be some gay doctors who think that gay men should always use condoms. So I see it in our job is to do some education to the patient about how to be their own advocate with their primary care provider. Only six people, six to eight people a week come and ask about PrEP, right. which is a very small stack given the influx of people that come in right. here. Part of it is that there's not been a lot of education outside of the research world to talk about PrEP, right? The FDA approved it, so Trivada has been approved now for, for use as for PrEP. Um, but there's not yet been a lot of campaign talking about that Gilead who manufactures the medication has said they're not going to do any direct-to-consumer marketing about this. This is not, they're, they're not pushing this. Why right? not, you think? Because they don't want to be accused of being in, in it for the profits that are associated with it, which is what they what AIDS Healthcare Foundation has largely been critical of, is the profits. And Gilead is saying, look, we're not going to do that. We're not, we're not doing direct-to-consumer marketing about it to tell people that they should take it because it's up to the individual choice level to, for people to choose whether or not they want to go on PrEP. We see ads all the time for drugs of every kind, not just for HIV treatment drugs, of happy couples leading normal and happy lives, and we see them for everything from birth control and onwards. But for PrEP, there hasn't really been anything. Why is that? Well, the, um, the, uh, the manufacturer of the drug, um, Gilead Sciences, has decided not to advertise it. And so that's why it's not advertised. Do you know why? Do you, what is your take? Isn't it, it's sort of like a valuable tool by the sounds of it and very effective when used correctly with the right, for the right person. Why is it not advertised? I think that um, they, uh, they're relying on other people to uh, promote this. They, uh, you know, I think that they, uh, they think this should um, come from the community and healthcare providers rather than from, uh, from their company. Uh, their company is uh, very successfully devoted toward treatment of viral illnesses, um, uh, hepatitis C and HIV, and, and that is their focus. I think the prevention use of these medicines is something that they've uh, supported uh, to the extent that they've donated drug and placebo for the clinical trials, but they have not provided funding for the research and they are not uh, funding the advertisement of these drugs. And that's a decision that they've made based on uh, their discussions with uh, their stakeholders and, um, and, and, and their perception that this, if it's really going to work, has to come from community demand and health providers. The lack of awareness around, around PrEP, you know, we've had uh, conversations with um, a, uh, aid service organizations around the country, we're trying to put together a resource guide, and we're coming into contact with a wide variety of attitudes and opinions about PrEP. Uh, ranging from, you know, ASOs who don't even know about PrEP, which is really surprising to me, to hostility around the fact that, no, we shouldn't be doing this, or because uh, we need to take care of HIV positive people first, uh, that should be where we place the funding. Do you think some of the resistance of people to accept PrEP in some practice or talk about PrEP is a moral issue? Is this whole idea that we're opening up a Pandora's box again of sexual promiscuity? I think that's part of, uh, part of some people's concerns. I think, uh, you know, we've seen concerns about um, changes in sexual practices, uh, uh, what you call promiscuity. We, 
We've seen those concerns time and time again. In this particular case, we found that uh, people who received the pill and even people who, who thought it was working and thought they were getting the real thing in our studies, they trend, tended toward having safer behavior. And uh, so we didn't see this wildfire of, of sexual promiscuity. In fact, we saw the opposite. People tended to be safer. And so we, we, in some people, we saw condom use increase. We saw discussions about HIV testing results increase. We saw a community form around HIV prevention. And, you know, I think, but I think that people do get over it. I mean, in the end, we really, really do not want to get HIV. And I think that that is an overriding concern. And I hope that people can get over their uh, anxiety about, about sex um, that comes up every time there's uh, something that may enhance sexual health. This concludes our four-part series on pre-exposure prophylactics, but the discussion on PrEPs has just begun. Please log on to dailyextra.com, our Facebook page, or our YouTube channel. Stay connected, and before making any decisions concerning your health, please consult with your healthcare professional.